In this video, we're solving problem 2.3.14s in Broberman. We'll be finding the ultimate nominal payment on an initially increasing perpetuity, after which it will be level. We're also going to add an extra wrinkle to this. We're going to solve it in two ways. Um, to illustrate some more of the formulas that we've been doing recently, that's one purpose for that. To illustrate flexibility in thinking as another purpose. And to illustrate that one way definitely can be easier than the other way, and that would definitely be the case in this problem. Here's the problem statement. We've got a perpetuity, an annuity that goes on forever. It costs 77.1, so that would be its present value right now. You'd have to pay that amount to get the annuity. It makes annual payments at the end of the year. The perpetuity pays one at the end of year two, not the end of year one. Careful, it's the end of year two two at the end of year three, et cetera, n at the end of the year n plus one, and then after year n plus one, starting at n plus two, the payments remain constant at n, the same as the payment at time n plus one. The effective annual interest rate is 10.5%. Calculate n, the ultimate uh, payment, the ultimate constant level payment for this perpetuity. That's where the book's directions end. I add on these extra directions here. Let's solve this problem in two ways. One, by thinking in terms of increasing annuities. Two, by thinking in terms of decreasing annuities. And we will see that the, the second way is definitely the quicker, easier way. Let's draw a timeline. Here's time zero, time one. These are all one year apart. Time n, time n plus 1, time n plus 2, n plus 3, etc. The first payment of 1 is at time 2, not time 1. Second payment of 2 is at time 3, etc. The payment at time n is going to be n minus 1. The payment at time n plus 1 is going to be n. And then the payments stay at n forever. So, and again, in the first pr approach, we're going to think in terms of increasing annuities. This is an increasing annuity right here. Let's think of it this way. Your basic increasing annuity. If we evaluate its present value one period before the first payment, that would be at time one. We want to go back to time zero, so we need to discount it. We need to multiply it by, by V, the present value discount factor. So the present value at time zero, which is 77.1, equals, well, first of all, again, we have V times, symbolically, the present value of this at time one would be A, um, excuse me, I A sub N, with interest rate 0 0.105. And then the other piece is this perpetuity that goes on forever. If I find its present value one period before the first payment, that would be at time N plus one. If I want to discount that back in time, to time zero, I need to multiply by V to the N plus one. It's got level payments of N, so it's N times your basic perpetuity, the present value being A sub infinity, 0 0.105. All right, so uh, the goal here would be to solve this equation for N. Looks like it could be complicated. Um, it's not quite as complicated as it looks, but uh, the other way, it's method two definitely will end up being easier. Let's go ahead and review the formulas. First of all, for IAN, that will be A and double dot, and the present value of a level annuity due, 0 0.105 is the interest rate again, minus N times V to the N, <coughs> excuse me, divided by the interest rate I, I is 0 0.105, but I won't bother plugging that in. And then, let's see, I've got the formula for this thing right there is just 1 over I. So I get over I. Again, I could plug in the 0 0.105. I think I'd like to keep it algebraic for the moment here. What's the formula for A double dot? Its formula is 1 minus V to the N over D, where D is the present value discount rate, not factor. We have a common denominator of I. These fractions could be added. Let me go ahead and multiply the V through the top here and use the fact that V over D simplifies V over D 
v recall is 1 over 1 plus i, and d is i over 1 plus i, so this simplifies to 1 over i. That's nice. So we get that this thing here, this whole thing, uh, written as one fraction, it can be written as 1 minus v to the n over i minus n v to the n plus 1 plus n v to the n plus 1 all over i. Right, I use the fact that v over d is 1 over i, v times v to the n is v to the n plus 1. These cancel, this all simplifies to 1 minus v to the n over i squared. It's not too bad, I guess. The goal now is that's equal to 77.1. We want to solve for n. It's looking more doable now. In fact, yes, we know i. We can figure out v. We definitely can solve for n. Let's go ahead and plug the numbers in here now. So i is 0 0.105. <clears throat> 0 0.105 squared is this. So that'll go on the bottom, 0 0.011025. And let's just keep the v as a v, though we can say what its value is over here. v is 1 over 1 plus i. 1.105 is 1 plus i. Take its reciprocal. That number is v, about 0.90497738. It probably would be good to store that. I'm going to need to take a log of it eventually here. Let's store this in register 0. Um, so again, I'm focused on this equaling that. I'll multiply both sides by 0 .00, 0 0.011025. So I get 77.1 times 0 0.011025. That gives me, let's use another color here, 0.850275 equals 1 minus v to the n. So v to the n is uh, 1 minus that. v to the n is going to be 0.1499725. Take the natural log of both sides. Use the fact that the exponent to the n could be brought in front. n is going to end up being the natural log of 0.1499725 divided by the natural log of v. All right, um, let's find the natural log of v first. Recall 0, that's v. Take its natural log. You get a negative number, which you would if you take a log of a number between 0 and 1. I'll store that in register 1. It's OK. That'll be a negative number as well. 0.1499725. Take its natural log and get this. Divide by what was in register 1. And n is approximately 19. And that is the correct answer. Approximately 19. All right. But that was kind of long. Not unbearably difficult, but difficult enough. Is method two, by thinking in terms of decreasing annuities, easier? Yes, at least if you can easily recognize this original annuity as the difference of two annuities, a level annuity minus a decreasing annuity. Think of it this way. You got a level annuity with payments of n, a perpetuity, I should say, and you've got a decreasing annuity n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, etc., down to 2 and 1, and then 0 after that. The n's keep going. If you subtract the bottom annuity from the top annuity, you get 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., n minus 2, n minus 1, n, n, etc. You get exactly what we had up here originally, thinking of the first payment here at time 0 as really being a 0. Pretend it's a zero. That will match this. So it would be the present value of this thing as an annuity immediate one period before the payment of zero at time one. It's the difference of two annuities immediate evaluated at time zero. So another way to look at the problem.
is then that 77.1, that present value at time zero, would be the present value of this uh, perpetuity, this level perpetuity, which would be n a infinity, and again the interest rate is 0 0.105, minus the present value of this decreasing annuity at time zero, d a sub n 0 0.105, so this becomes n over i for this thing, because this thing is 1 over i, where i is 0 0.105. And then the formula for such a present value of a decreasing annuity we derived in the last video was n minus a sub n over i. Combine these fractions, it simplifies to plus a sub n over i. Multiply both sides by i, like before. We have a well, okay. We don't. We have an i in the bottom, not an i squared. So be careful here. So I'm multiplying 77.1 by i times 0 0.105. That gives me 8.0955 equals a n. But what is a n, it's 1 minus v to the n over i. So I end up multiplying by i again, ultimately meaning I was really multiplying by i squared. So multiply 8.0955 by i again times 0 0.105, and you get the exact same equation from the previous method that we solved up here. This equation and this equation are the same thing and then lead to the same answer n equals 19. But you can see this approach at least if you can recognize the original perpetuity as the difference of a perpetuity minus a decreasing finite annuity and you're focused on the present values and you, and you can see this method definitely is a bit easier but you have to be able to recognize that.